Okay, this is how we're going to get our power back. We lost power last night. And we're going to use our Generac uh, eight, 8 kilowatt generator, 10 peak, to get going. Uh, what's on this side over here? We've got ports on here for the 220 hookup, and we have an extra 110s here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is get it outside. So the first thing we have to do with our generator, it's usually out of gas, so we have to put gas in it. So we have some gas over here. And you'll find that five gallons might run about five hours. So let's go top it off. Okay, let me go get my siphon hose. We have our shaker siphon hose. Okay, there's like a little marble inside here. And what that does, it allows you to prime the hose by shaking it. So what we'll do is we'll open up our gas tank here. I actually have it half full already. We ran out of power last night. I just wipe down the hose like this to get dust off. It might be on there. Okay, we put the hose in. Once it's in, we shake it. It primes it, and you can see gas is running now. So, okay, look, peek down in here, you can see. I'm going to stop once this gas gets to the top of this neck inside here. I'm going to wait for it to come up like halfway here. Once that comes up, then I'll pull this hose out on the suck end and then consider it full. And then it will have about a five hour tank full run time. Okay, so we'll fast forward that. We lost power this time last night at about uh, 4.30. Is that right, Terry? Yeah. And uh, we had run the generator for two and a half hours last night, and the gas tank is still, it's over one third and probably a half full, so that's where we get the five hours from. But because we're ready to start now, uh, I want to fill the tank up before uh, it's running, because you don't want this vibrating and, and doing this, because then you can spill gas everywhere. It's kind of semi-dangerous semi now doing it, like I am, but uh, it'd be way more dangerous with the uh, generator running. Now this little screen in here is here for catching dirt. It can come out, it's kind of hard to pull out, but you always want to leave it in there because it'll catch any dirt that's in the tank, which these tanks, I don't know how they get dirt in, I guess from the gas stations when they pump, they pick dirt up in the underground tanks that are out there. You have to ask an EPA expert, like an inspector, how that happens, but I don't know any of them. Maybe it might have been three, even because um, three. they're good as Joe. It's like it's getting up there. Yeah, it's, it's off the bottom. That's okay. Yeah, I'm afraid it's going to go over there. Okay, well, it's on the side. Mm -hmm. well, this is always a 
dangerous part. You don't want to uh, leave gas uh, spill over this. Now, if you had gas spill over this, number one, wipe it down. And we also have those uh, blowers inside, okay? To uh, the electric blowers to blow off any gas that you're done with. So we put the cap back on. Be right back. Nothing at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right. So these generators have a onboard battery, a 12 volt battery to help you start. But uh, these batteries will die after some period of time. So I found it better to use our spare battery we have for our trolling motor on our kayak to use that as your power supply to start the engine on this. So we'll take these caps off. And I pre-wired these clips here to, to mount like that. And I'm just a little fussy with things, so I always take the positive and clamp it out like that. And now that I have that hooked up, all we've got to do is zoom into this panel here. Um, we want to make sure our fuel is on. This up and down would be off, okay? Left and right would be open, okay? And we'll, we'll power that on by uh, taking this switch here and hitting it over to the start. Okay, when it doesn't start, what you want to do is pull the choke out. Try it again. The generator is running, we'll come in here and take this yellow cable that we have and plug it into that uh, electrical outlet over there. Have that, that end marked in the house. It is a four prong uh, connector and it's very important that one of these prongs go in the way that it's designed to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is run this out to the generator and plug that in. So let's take a look. We're in the basement now, and we'll, what we have here is we have what's called a transfer switch, okay? And this is where you're either going to your utility provider or to your generator, okay? And then also you have what they call a sub-panel that's being fed from the transfer switch. So, first thing I want to do is go to the sub-panel and just go through here, turn everything off. Okay, you can turn these off as fast as you like. Then... With everything off here, we can turn this on. That means the generator is now feeding it. And what we want to do is take that current from here and then activate these switches here. We can turn these on slowly, one at a time. I'm taking about half a second between each one to avoid a surge. But as we turn these on, you can see they're lighting up. the uh, power will come back on in here. Okay, that's our hot water heater. That's an oil-fired hot water heater, so the load is reduced because it's using oil energy instead of electrical energy to, to heat. 
Okay, so that's how we start up. To shut down, uh, what we'd have to do is just go outside, turn the generator off, unhook the yellow cable, and then come down here and turn it back online once we restore power. The way we know the power's been restored, restored is that some of the lights on the house will come on when the power from the utility comes back on. So right. when the power comes back on, do we come down and push this to online? All you have to and do. And then, then unplug the generator from the house? That part doesn't matter. You just want to turn this online. This is just what stream is feeding me. Right. Generator or PG&E, right, or utility provider. Mm -hmm. so. that's, that's why I was just asking when the power yeah. comes back on, do we right. flip it? You like can flip before, it right away. Before, well, I'm just asking before turning the generator yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that right. part's fine. You don't want to, I don't want to, right now, I don't want to flip this up here and then back on here because everything in the yeah. sub panel is on. Right. When you, when you put load on a panel, it, let's say, takes, uh, you know, 100 units of current to run everything on the circuit. Well, that takes 100 units of current to start the circuit. However, when you turn everything off, there's off and then back on, there's a surge that happens, and that surge could be 300% of what the run load is. So you don't want to overstress the generator. So that's why we do the individual on, 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 on at a time. But we don't have to turn those breakers off when the power comes back on. bg and &E can handle it. Okay. Our little tiny generator cannot. Okay. That's the way to look at that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for filming, Terry. Mm -hmm. Aren't you happy to have power down? <laughs>